What's up, everyone, and welcome to The Pilots Club, a podcast all about the first episodes of television shows and the many reasons why they may or may not be worth a watch. Every month, we pick a different pilot episode to watch and then discuss it here on our show. We release these episodes first and foremost to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash the whatnots on our three dollar tier and above. And then two years later, we release these episodes to a wider audience on a public feed. So if you want to catch up on two years worth of episodes, patreon.com slash the whatnots is the place to do that. When we first made the Pilots Club, it was a little rough around the edges, so we wanted to polish it up a bit and repackage it, so to speak, with this new intro. Uh, and eventually, you will stop hearing me doing this pre-recorded intro, uh, and I will just start saying it as we record each episode. But until then and beyond, please enjoy the show and what it grows into. Hi, folks. Thanks for listening. Welcome to another Patreon bonus episode for the Whatnots yeah. Review Show. It's Melissa and Kyle. You remember us from before. Hopefully. Because if you don't, <laughs> might be an issue. <laughs> well, I don't know who picks a Patreon bonus episode before they picked a single made feed episode to ever listen to us. It's a questionable <laughs> choice. Well, I mean, we get paid, so right. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> you've looked up all our episodes and sorted by price highest first <laughs> sounds good sounds good tonight we are trying uh, a, a new series here in our patreon i've yes. been calling it yeah. the pilots club we have not officially named it that but we wanted to do check in every month, do these shorter little review show style episodes. And instead of focusing on a whole TV show or a season of, t of a TV show, we are watching a bunch of random TV pilot episodes. Yes. I, yeah, I, I had a real similar idea to. But, but yeah, this is basically what we're going to do. Just like shorter. It's not a full review uh, obviously, mm. it's just a like, hey, let's just check out that pilot just to see what it was yeah. like and talk about it for a bit. Uh, so, yeah, I'm super excited. I, I think this will be a good like grab bag of shows old and new uh, and will be a yeah. good thing for our Patreon. So, yeah, put on your pilot hats. We take to the skies. We are starting with. The pilot episode of the Sci-Fi Channel original series Eureka, which aired on uh, July 18th, 2006. On Sci-Fi. Right? On, on the Sci-Fi Channel, back when yeah. it was still spelled Sci-Fi the regular way, I think, before it changed to S-Y-F-Y. -Y. Yeah, which is strange, and I don't know why they changed it to that, but I guess it makes sense in a weird branding way i don't know but good stuff yeah i i, I remember when this show came out and i i mm. like saw the commercials on t tv or the advertisements and magazines and stuff like that and it just i never really knew what it was exactly never really was interested uh enough to check it out so this was a brand new one for, for, for me have you have you see, seen this before yes i i did watch eureka when it was airing but i don't think i watched it for very long if it came okay. out in 2006 i probably watched it for a year or two and then got Both of them and uh it it oddly has a similar start to the show where there's this like there's oh. like weird things happening. There's this new technology. They're building this like ring looking device uh, and they're turning it on. And that's the big like inciting event. The military is there. They want to know what's g g going on and keep an eye on this thing. And it it oddly felt like that i i don't know where these shows go in their trajectories i don't know how similar they are uh in that way but i got a weird uh stargate vibe understandable another sci-fi channel original series exactly. i just looked it up because uh i remember the week stargate sg1 had its series finale 
was like right at the same time our family got our first DVR th- through mm. Dish Network. Yeah. So I thought, well, the Sci-Fi Channel's rerunning all the Stargate SG-1. I've got this DVR now. I can just record a bunch of Stargate SG-1. And so I like mainlined a bunch of random episodes and then watched the series finale. So I've seen like a handful, like a, like a dozen <laughs> plus of just <laughs> sorted Stargates and the series finale. And I've never gone back and watched anything earlier than that. That's funny. That was in, I wanted to date myself. That was in 2007. Uh, Eureka started in 2006. Which is weird to think that I, like, back then when the show started, I would have had to put a tape in the VCR if I right. wasn't there to watch it on time. Yeah. yeah. Appointment viewing. But, yeah, yeah I understand thinking of Stargate. The main character in Eureka is named Jack Carter. And the two main characters of Stargate SG-1 are a, a man named Jack and a woman named Samantha Carter. Which is <laughs> weird that they've got that. like <laughs> those names already existing on the network. They come up with another big show and they're like, let's just take these names and smush them together. It's like when the, the main character of Star- <laughs> that 70s show was named Eric Foreman. And then House started, and one of the supporting doctors on that show was also named Eric Foreman, and nobody thought, maybe name him Ethan or something. Nobody asked them to make any changes. It's okay. We've got room for two separate Eric Foremans. I mean, Lost was kind of around this same time, and we know that Jack was- Another Jack! Right? Yes! Jacks were big! Big Jacks back in 2006. That's right. for sure. Um, but, but yeah, so besides my like, besides my weird Stargate connection, uh, I think the thing this reminded me of the most was Fringe, uh, which yeah. is the show they made after lost but it's that same it the, like this feels like an x-files type of sh- sh- show a f- mm. f- fringe sci-fi uh d- weird event happening of the week and then they go to yep. and investigate yep. and uh you know they like they they just have a cop that has some like weird ray gun and they don't really explain that in the pilot uh, there's yes. weird sci-fi stuff g- g- going on. I didn't notice too. It's it just like, like the the p- person whose house he ends up staying at seems to be running kind of a bed and breakfast, but also seems to be like yeah. a, a a full service s- sex worker. At least that's what it's implying I, that she. I think she is a uh, she's a psychologist and a therapist. And she has this house with a couple spare rooms. I don't know if it's formally a bed and breakfast, but it's like if somebody comes to town and they need a place to stay, like Jack Carter, who gets abandoned, sure. he gets stuck there while his car's in the shop. To be they know one of there's the space places, at Beverly's. Yeah. Beverly will take you in. And I think she's just really into sex recreationally and is part of the therapy. I don't know if yeah. like, people pay her to have sex with them. I don't. I d- did not remember Beverly at I all. There are certain characters who I yeah. did fondly remember, like Lupo, like uh, <laughs> like Max Headroom, Taggart, um, uh, Fargo. We didn't even get to Sarah. Sarah's unfortunately not in this first episode. Uh, they When Jack takes this sheriff job, the new sheriff of Eureka. Mm-hmm. Him and his daughter move into this prototype smart house. It's like, well, uh, you're a sheriff. You, you were just brought on suddenly. You need a place to live. We're working on this technology. We know you'll put up with this technology. And the voice of the smart house is just Fargo speaking in a higher register. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get a separate voice for the smart house and he also didn't think he could give it just his own regular voice like i forget what the acronym in- is instead of talking like right here he has to talk up here to make it seem right. like it's an ai <laughs> right, right and like the house's name is sarah because that's whatever the acronym stands for and he's like well i should make myself sound like a lady i won't bring on another <laughs> lady I'll, like i'll just do it 
That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I was saying like you have this character who runs that like that that like psychologist yes. bed and breakfast place who then just happens to be like meeting with the president uh, like the, yeah. the, in, in, like in the She's pilot up to stuff. and is mysterious about it. Not like, oh, yes, one of my clients is the president, but just like like is cagey about saying that it was the president even though we could clearly yeah. see that that was like, well, that's his helicopter. Like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's I, I, I think a lot of those sci fi shows, especially at the time, if they didn't do a premise like this, where it is the like, here's the strange t- t- mm. town with strange things happening there was at least like a one or two parter like in the show where the characters yeah. went to a town like this where it's all the like weird things are happening in, in, in that sci-fi town or it like exists out of time and is its own yep. little universe um and yeah it like it in a like i i don't want this to sound negative but it f- feels quaint like it feels Sure. Small yeah. in that sense. Like, I won't really have to think big of like, OK, now we're going to be traveling to the pyramids of Giza and investigating over here. And now we're in Hong Kong and now we're over there. It, like, it feels like the entire thing will take place in that town. And that's it. maybe a yeah. little bit outside here and there, but just like right in that vicinity. Um, which that's felt, yeah, that oh, is wait. what I remember. Yeah, it's nice. I I do like the premise of the show that there, which I don't think we've detailed. But Jack Carter is a U.S. marshal. He and he has this teenage daughter who's acting out, being very rebellious since her parents have divorced, and she like ran away to Seattle or something. And he's driving her back home to Los Angeles on the way there, somewhere in like Oregon, I think. And they get into a car accident. Their car is totaled outside of the small little town. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they find out that this town, Eureka, is home to every secret government science test. But not in like a, a creepy way, more in like a, it, it's good for these people to be in a community get together where they can work off each other. They're with people who get them. If there's anything wild that happens to do with this technology, like it's all contained within like one city, secrets aren't getting out before we're ready for them to get out. Like it's it's an it is a nice little town. And then uh, the sheriff gets his leg cut off by a black hole and he can't be the sheriff anymore. Uh, And because he's already been introduced to the town, he helped out the townspeople. Jack Carter gets brought in as the new sheriff of Eureka. And that's the premise of the show. This guy who does not know science particularly well is now stuck wrangling in all these mad scientists in this cute little town. Yeah. Yeah. He's the outsider in this community Mm -hmm. of uh, that that is like deeply entrenched in the strange sciences that they do. But then also have their like weird interpersonal relationships and histories yeah. that he's coming in on and just be, 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 be being like all of you guys are weird like why are all of you yeah. weird <laughs> what's happening here <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah it, it it felt like a good time i i i could see myself watching this kind of in the background like I, I i don't know if the pilot itself was enough to truly hook me but it does yeah. seem like a good show and i think there's what like six or seven seasons of this it ran it, for five or six yeah like it it had a successful run it was like one of the biggest things happening on sci-fi channel at that time for yeah. as much as has ever been happening with sci-fi channel yeah, so it feels like something I could dive into and like have on pretty consistently for a long time. Mm-hmm. And if I happen to not be paying attention as much, like I'll be fine with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems like they could go to some interesting places with this. Yeah, that's that's what I remember. And watching this pilot, there are some characters who I feel like haven't come into their own yet. I remember really liking Fargo. But I don't totally remember why anymore. And watching him in the pilot, it's like, yeah, it's just sort of like a cute 
nerdy like lab assistant guy like he hasn't done anything yet he has sure, yet to introduce yeah. the smart house with his own voice but pitched higher <laughs> maybe he was just funny like you just liked the the jokes or the yeah. comedy that was around him mm-hmm. but who knows i think it is a well-structured pilot i like how it there's a lot going on this is like a I think it aired as like a TV movie almost. When we watched this thing on yeah, Amazon like Prime, it was like 84 minutes long. Season yeah. Season premiere. So it's packed with a lot of stuff, but I think it navigates it well and introduces things in stages. You're, you're not bombarded with all these characters at once. It, it, it slowly walks you through. These are our outsiders. Here's the Carter family. They get stuck in this town. <laughs> Uh, they meet all these different characters. They get to see something that's weird about the town. We've got this central mystery of the scientist who made like a, a black hole machine gone wrong. Jack yeah. learns about the town. He learns about all the secret scientists. He helps save the town. And then they're like, you should just be here all the time. What if we need more saving, Jack? Move to Oregon, Jack. Yeah. It, I, I, in terms of structure yeah it's very simple not confusing there's no like mm -hmm. weird time shifts source it's just it's very straightforward in that sense um i i do agree and almost want to put this as a negative i thought there was a little too much going on though um again not in a confusing way mm -hmm. but I, I felt like multiple bits that they did in this two or you know one big long season yeah premiere could have served as the as the like central premise of that pilot by itself like yeah. just the idea of this black hole machine that goes wrong there's this missing kid like that by itself could have been a pilot um you know turning on this other like weird ring shaped device black hole device i'm not sure exactly what it is uh and like finding that one young child that could do all the yeah. math to do all of that stuff like that by itself could have been the pilot right yeah um, i think also the more like family oriented story between mm. jack and his daughter and mm -hmm. they now have to move into this new town and maybe there's some kind of weird things happening in this town there was that one kid on a bike who was like stranger danger and they're like gee thanks einstein he goes no i'm an op and <laughs> einstein's <laughs> live down down that way so it, it's just it's this, like, like i know what class of scientist i am thank you sir we're not all einsteins around here i just see i i took that to be like he is a descendant of that like oh. it is like the families have now moved to this town and like they are in oh. like it is the dis like he he is in oppenheimer uh, <laughs> oh i didn't take that literally that uh, that's a solid idea yeah i thought it was more like you know, when you start school in like first grade, you take an aptitude test and that tells you like who your archetypical scientist is. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a personality test. Yeah, test, but which scientist are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, like I I I, I could see. It just like the weird things with that, the weird uh, like obsession that the. The like local d -d diner, like waiter uh, dude had like with the town and the map, and just like he seemed to know what to do without really being involved and stuff like that. It just that stuff by itself was enough to be like, okay, there's weird things happening here. I'm interested. Like, what is with this town? Um, uh -huh. so, so yeah, I felt like it had like three or four ideas for a pilot just like mashed into one and they ha mm -hmm. ha happen to like we said structure it really nicely that i could understand yeah. it all it never felt like it was moving too fast or was confusing or stuff like like they did a great job with that but again it was just like i don't i don't need all of this like i you were fine with one of them <laughs> but yeah there you go so Good stuff. Good stuff. 
Yeah. Was there any particular character you took a liking to? Anybody you could see yourself following if you did continue um, to watch the show? Who was the mechanic dude that had the Joe priest? Morton? That's yeah. he, that's Henry. I liked him a lot because um, it like his like the weird thing about him wasn't weird per se, but it was very matter of fact could also have been read as a joke as a like, hey, I'm retired now. This is what I do with my mm. life. And but I used to, you know, be a NASA scientist. Yeah. And I worked on rocket ships. And so, yeah, he, you know, he's fixing the car. He's like, I just I do stuff like this for for fun. And he just seemed like a good, mm -hmm. genuine dude. He seemed like the most regular person. Yeah. There. But also. Only because I we, we know that he, you know, used to work on spaceships or who knows what, uh, like mm -hmm. he's probably seen some stuff like he's probably smarter than he appears than, yeah. than he is as j -j -j just a like mechanic slash tow service. Like, <laughs> he was just like, he's a good dude. He is. That's I do remember that about the show that Henry's like really reliable you can always go to henry uh he's got a primary like mechanical engineering background but he knows a little bit about everything so he's like the scientist jack goes to whenever he needs help with anything and then he fans yeah. out to all the other individual scientists of the town i remember his character having like real emotion and real pathos to him but again i don't remember specifically what it was like i remember I just the broadest strokes of things that happened in the show I mostly remember that smart house. <laughs> Could you be confusing it with the Disney Channel original oh, smart no. house? <laughs> oh, no. Sarah and Pat, very distinct in my mind. <laughs> Two completely different smart houses. There you go. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this one a lot. Yeah. Uh, check it out if you just need some nice, easygoing, sci-fi light dramedy times. I want to yeah. say also, I think this pilot was very well shot. It had some very interesting cinematography in it at times. Sure. Not the Absolutely. highest production values, but I think they use that camera well. There you go. Yeah. Um, do, I, do we want to do recommendation or just like stuff this reminded you of? Is that a, the how, how, how do we want to sure. do these we can. pilots? I okay. think, it, yeah, we can do that. Connect the show to other shows. We've already talked about Stargate SG-1 and Fringe. This reminded me of my beloved So Weird, which is a Disney yeah. Channel show from the 90s about a girl whose mom is a singer-songwriter and they travel around on her tour bus, but the girl runs a paranormal blog. Yep. And every town they go to, she finds something weird to investigate. And there is an episode where they go to a town where um, the mom had once written a jingle for this software company. And it's this huge software company, but they're, they're real cheap skates. So they've bought the cheapest lane possible. So it's this massive headquarters in this like tiny country town with nothing else in it. <laughs> That's funny. I, I would recommend uh, a show that I started watching recently, uh, Star Girl on CW. Oh. Or I, it might be on HBO Max now is where they're doing it. Um, but yeah, it is one of the DC Comics like superhero shows, but in a similar way the like there's a f family that moves into this like really small town that there's just like one or two streets um right and they have their main street with the movie theater and the town hall it's all right there there's that local re restaurant where they all meet uh it it really had a similar vibe in that sense and the the nice. young teenage daughter thinks it's a drag and there's nothing to do it's boring yeah uh but then uh star girl then focuses on her that character the new uh friend she meets at school and then her super he he heroing adventures as uh she thinks that her father uh who has been 
absent from her life could have been Starman from the JSA, oh. the Justice Society of America. Oh, uh, and so she I was thinking of that. Starman, the John Carpenter movie. I think those are different. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that's that's the one that I would recommend there. So, nice. I have an idea for a pilot that we could do next month. Yes. What is it? I think this is one you have seen. I know you've mentioned wanting to get back to it, but I was hoping to start it real soon here. I think we should watch the pilot to Doom Patrol. Uh, okay. DC Comics, HBO Max, it, it's, it's all yeah. up, up, up there. Because um, I recently went through uh, the three seasons of Titans that are yeah are currently out and they do kind of have a backdoor pilot to doom patrol yes. in that we've uh, seen this I, I i have not started the actual doom patrol show yet uh and i i i think this next month we should talk about episode one of doom patrol okay i am down for this good? cool yeah well, I, I i figure on this we could just switch off back and forth instead yeah. of like p -p 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 pitching stuff yeah so like, when it's just one. like i'll pick one yeah one episode in a month go ahead and assign me something like i don't sure. have to invest so much time that i feel like i need choice in the matter yeah and uh, i mean we can go from you know half an hour sitcoms to cartoons yeah. to a two-hour season premiere you know yeah. we'll, we'll mix it up each month and get a good variety of stuff so yeah, yeah. and just study the the art of the tv episode the art of the pilot itself kind of like what we did with our our trailer reaction series where it was just about what makes a good trailer regardless of what the film itself is i have an idea for something just came to my head i'll 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 tease it here, just for the fact that I'm okay. mentioning it, I have an idea that I think okay. you're gonna, gonna be in. I'll talk <laughs> with you once we're done recording. Uh, here, All right. I, I think this would be fun. Uh, but yeah, so I I think that's all we kind of have to say on the pilot for Eureka. Yep. So there you go. Uh, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to stitch all of these together. I'm planning on stitching all of these patreon shows into one big yeah. thing and having that be our patreon ex exclusive stuff each month um so yeah i guess with that we will see you next time bye bye